Jeez, it's like snowed in Buffalo or something. What's up, man? What's up? Hey, how you doing? Awesome. Ready to do this? Yeah, let's go. Sunday drive. Then me plus two of my children combined. Me and my two children don't weigh as much as you do right now. Are, are you trying to make me feel better? No, I'm saying we should stop at McDonald's for breakfast. <laughs> All right, so the bills and the cap space. So overthecap.com is always my source for all this stuff. Yes, they they went crazy this weekend with salary cap updates because they probably figured everybody was going to do it. So here's here's where we sit now because they went ahead and they updated the, the draft pool and uh, that, that stuff wasn't done yet. So they, they did a great job. They went back over um, and, and updated a lot of stuff. So the Bills right now figuring, and this isn't figured into their salary cap space, the Bills have and will spend about $8 million in draft picks just right now with the picks they have. That's not counting any picks that they acquire. It's a lot it's of money eight, though. It's though. a lot of money, but two first round picks. It's gonna be what happens. So they got $8 million in this year's cap space in draft picks, okay? okay? All right. So that brings them to $30 million. All right. They have 40 players under roster right now with $30 million in cap space. And some interesting stuff about that. First off, your top four players to count against the salary cap are Tyrod Taylor, Cordy Glenn, Jerry Hughes, <whistles> Charles Clay. <laughs> right, okay. So between those guys, I think Tyrod's at 18, yeah. Glenn's at 14, uh, Hughes is at 10, Five yep. ish, yep. and Clay's at nine. Yep. So you can't just. I, there's a, a thing out there called a post June first cut. It's when you can cut a player, but say from an accounting standpoint, that doesn't happen till after June. Um, and what that does is kind of splits some of the money, right? Yep. So that's what that does. So logic says, oh well, those big salary caps, you could just post June first cut all of them. Well, you can't. There's a limit to how many post-June yeah. first cuts you can have. You can't just clear out. You can't just clear everybody out and split the caps. Um, so, it, you know, you either take it this year, you can take part of it this year, and, and part of it the year after. So, the picks for the Bills, yeah. they have their draft picks. Yeah. How many? Eight? Eight total. Okay, so let's say you're saying that if they, if they pick eight and they sign them all, that's eight million dollars. Yeah. So essentially, what you're saying is that not the, the number is a little bit skewed. So they go from thirty-eight million down to thirty million in right. cap space, but now they have forty-eight guys in the contract. Right. Okay. Exactly. And right. the top fifty-one players under the top fifty-one contracts Are count counted. towards the calorie cap. The salary cap. Right. To crush the haters at a pretty ferocious pace. All right, the interesting thing that we have now when we talk about the Bills, they got a 40-man roster. Um, they do have a, a big number of free agents, unrestricted yeah. free agents. Like you said, they have four restricted free agents. They have 18 unrestricted free agents. Um, and a lot of those free agents, I think people just assume are going to be here. Sure. Like you talk about Kyle Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about it last week. He's so, you said he's so into the process of what's going on. It would be f almost foolish of him to work this hard for this long and not reap the spoils of what this where this team could be headed. Right. So the thing about the the free agents, uh, there's a lot on there. I, I think a major. I, I think I want to say 12 or 13 of them are under 30. So that's a big deal. Well, and don't forget that a lot of them were built out on one year deals. So yes. this was kind of by design. The Bills went through and wiped the roster of a lot of the holdovers from previous regimes and just sign a bunch of guys to one of your deals. Leonard Johnson is a perfect example. Like you go and you look at a lot of these guys and this was by design. Like this was this was on purpose to generate a lot of next year cap once you knew where you really were. So um, you know I think we have to give this organization with its current staff a lot of credit because the guys they brought in for the most part fit. Right, I mean, mm -hmm. Leonard Johnson fit. Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. What a great oh, fit those two are. Beautiful. You know, so, I mean, they, they really identified their talent well in that space. Um, still need a, you know, st still need a little bit of help. Um, you know, like a lot of people just assume Preston Brown is gonna be back, but Preston Brown right now 
Name me another inside linebacker that's a free agent in 2018. I honestly don't know of another inside linebacker. In addition to that, that's a free agent. Inside linebacker, 4-3 defense. Now, that he is the classic example of what guys do in the NFL now. Uh -huh. He came in on his rookie deal, never injured. No. Played all four seasons. Led the league in tackles this year. Yep. He may be a casualty. Yeah. He may be one of those guys where we don't have enough to pay him. Mm -hmm. So people assume he's going to be coming back. Um, he's going to be a very wanted commodity. Absolutely. On that, open, on that open market. Oh my god. But that's so. Let's look at a guy like um, Kevin Minter is going to be a free agent. Yes. Could Minter come in and captain the middle of a defense? Or do you look to try and find somebody on the free agent market? The Bills were successful using the free agent market this year. Are they going to employ the same strategy? Are they going to draft? What are they going to do? They have the draft capital to go out and get guys. And we know that yeah. inside linebackers don't usually cost you a whole heck of a lot. Look at Reuben Foster this last year. Fall, 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 fall in the draft. If he was getting drafted this year, it would have fallen even more. Exactly. Yeah. Roll, roll tide. Roll tide. <laughs> You know, like Preston Brown's gonna get paid. Like yeah. he's gonna he's gonna He'll get probably paid get 30, 30, 35, you think? For four years? Maybe. Or higher than that. I don't know. That's a tough call right now because from from a market standpoint, he's kind of top of the market. Mm -hmm. Um you know, can he play in it can he play, you know, middle of a three four? He's played them both. He's played them. Well that's what I mean. That's what makes him so Yes. That's what makes him so valuable is that you're not you're not pigeonholing him to one system. So, and you're talking about a McDermott a system that not only predicated on how the secondary performs, but that quarterback in the middle. I mean, that's why you you feel you had a little bit more consistency with the defense this year is because he was in there every play. Mm -hmm. Yep. Milano would come in, Humber would come in, Alexander would come in, but that centerpiece was Brown sitting in the middle. And that's, you know, the Bills still have Vallejo, mm -hmm. and they drafted last year. And Milano played out of his mind. Like, he, did. he earned that outside spot by the end of the year. So, again, it appears like the Bills have made the right personnel moves yeah. for what they want. They seem to be able to identify if this year is a sign of how consistent they're, they are, they were very good at identifying talent that would fit this year. But McDermott's system is not predicated on a pass rush. No. It's predicated on coverage. And there's only one cornerback on this roster that I could give you by name, and that's Trey White. And you look at the free agent market, and it's littered with older players. Mm -hmm. You're a viewer, and yes, I'm a doer. Um, the relationships that we talked about earlier are that much more important that you build with different teams. If there's guys on other teams that you think you can trade for, um, that would be pretty huge. And like you said, they got the draft capital to trade for a player. And they can absorb the cap money of whoever it is. That's what made the Josh Norman discussion so interesting is the fact that they went to the Super Bowl, uh, McDermott coach defense, went to the Super Bowl with Josh Norman at corner. The next year, they gave up 300 yards receiving to Julio Jones in one game after he drafted 75 guys. <laughs> Um, but that, that's the thing. That's, so you know he works in that defense. And I couldn't name the guy who was across from him. No. But now that you have Trey White there, Poyer and Hyde covering the back, oh, but even it just EJ, seems to fit. Yeah, but even EJ Gaines is a great fit. And, Absolutely. You know, yes. So you, you can't knock that. I don't know what the market for Gaines is really going to be because this was the first year he's really been able to show his ability. And he was great. Yes. When he was on the field, mm -hmm. he was great. But, you know, it was those nagging injuries that seemed to just haunt him all season, which was kind of the M.O. on him. But, again, it's the NFL, so guys get hurt. But um, And he did, because of the play of White, he did get picked on more than he usually did. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so. But, remember, he came from a system where he's playing opposite Jermaine Johnson, who's now on the free agent market. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, you take a look at what your options are here. And EJ Gaines makes the most sense. I don't think he's going to cost you a fortune. He would be, yeah, he'd be relatively cheap. Yeah. I mean, you had thrown out a number. If you can get him for four at 25, four for 20, four for 25 mil, um, I think that makes sense. He's at an age where that contract makes sense. You know, yeah. just he's just leaving his rookie deal. So. And the only reason you get that 
four years for 20 million is because he hasn't been able to stay on the field consistently. Yeah. And that's why we said that Preston Brown's contract would be that much more because he has been on the field for four straight years without injury. With multiple systems. I, it's, wow. I mean, you really start peeling back the layers of the Preston Brown free agent market, and it's 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 an expensive equation. Yes. And, you know, the Bills, again, they have the ability to go grab somebody in the draft that they want to. They, they can, mm -hmm. right? But is this where we see them draft somebody and then them grab a, you know, a linebacker, uh, you know, who was in Carolina again, right? So, I mean, there's <laughs> a lot of stuff that you can do, but I, Preston Brown on this team is going to handcuff a lot of the other positions that you have to fill. If you guys at home think you have what it takes. McDermott's system has never really been a sack machine. No, it but hasn't. It's dependent on, guys getting to the quarterback is dependent on the secondary coverage. It's, it's not about hiding blitz schemes. It's it's not about that at all. It's about coverage and just constant pressure. Just constant four-man pressure all the time. Um, so how do you address that in the free agent market? In this market, who are you going to get? This market is very, very dry as far as that goes. I mean, there could be, there could be, I'm stretching here. There could be a reunion of Julius Peppers. I think he's, he's probably done though. Yeah. Um, but, he may be able to pull him out of, you know, a two-year, $10 million deal just to set the edge for a couple of years in Buffalo until they draft somebody because he may want to, they may want to use their draft pick somewhere else. Even so, you know, at $5 million for the season, at a, as a rotational player, I don't really mind that. You have Shaq Lawson who's missed time two consecutive seasons. I, I don't mind bringing in a guy who's a veteran rotational talent yes. to have – you know, but uh, if, if, uh, that doesn't bother me at all. You said that um, Jerry Hughes played, what, 66% of the yeah. snaps? Yeah. You don't think Peppers, even though he's older, could do that? Well, that's if That's I mean. all you're playing. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So now you're, you're splitting that $10 million up over two years. You, you can you can, uh, you can free yourself of Hughes and use that money somewhere else. Yep, you could. So, or you could keep Hughes because he wasn't hateful, right? He wasn't, but... When you're paying somebody that level of dollar, you're expecting a bit more That's the thing. splash production. Yes. So sacks are what I call splash production, right? Okay. You make 10 tackles, you, t you tackle the right player 10 times in a year, and you're looked at as an elite level player, <laughs> right? That's what, a, that's what a sack is. You tackle the correct player on the correct play behind the line of scrimmage, right? <laughs> so his tackles for loss were down as well, and that's the number that gets me. I, I don't want to look at just sacks. I want to look at total tackles for loss by defensive tackle and by defensive end. That's how you judge whether a guy is really getting through the line or not is tackles by loss, not just sacks. I think we get, you know, this sack number is a sexy stat and, you know, we get caught yeah, up in it. Yeah. Total tackles for loss is what you got to look at. Obviously, those numbers were down because the snap count was down. So, do you have to get rid of Hughes? No, of course you don't. Um, you, you absolutely can keep him. Bringing in but, another guy in the edge wouldn't make a ton of sense, but it doesn't fix your problems at defensive tackle because you got lots of problems at defensive tackle. Mm -hmm. Which will be fixed by Starla too, though. I mean, I, I, I'm already going on the record. You're going on the record. You need it. it. Him, and, him, and, uh, him and Kyle next to each other is going to be wonderful. But you know what I'm saying is, no, going back to the point about Jerry Hughes, now you could say, well, pro Hughes guys could say, listen, he may not have had the numbers of sacks or tackles for loss, but this secondary benefited from him being in there all the time. Well, the thing was, he wasn't in there all the time. If he played like 80% of the snaps, 85% of the snaps, you say, hey, he's generating pressure that's not showing up in the stat sheet, but hes that's what he's doing. These guys are, are benefiting in the secondary because of his presence. He's getting double teamed or whatever, and else, or someone else is getting all these sacks, but someone else wasn't getting all the sacks. No. So that's the thing that's the thing if his if his number was lower we wouldn't even be having this conversation right he'd just be like any other kind of defensive end that plays in a McDermott system that's just trying to generate consistent pass rush for the secondary and the linebackers to make the money basically. and the interesting thing about the playoff game against Jacksonville was Hughes had Bortles dead to rights twice yes totally dead to rights twice and he whiffed because he was trying to, he was trying to strip the ball. Play. Yeah. He was trying to strip the ball. Which I understand that you want the possession. I get it. You know, I get that. But, um, you know. It's all about you, Jerry. And that's another thing. is the, and I'm going to harken back. I don't remember who said it. Um, were you there when this quote happened? I was not there. Okay. I believe 
I want to say that you know our, our good buddy Ryan Lacell at Rock Sports Network and Icy Vic, I believe they were at camp. I think guaranteed it was they were there. But yeah. I think some a couple others were there. I maybe Drew Gear of the Rock Power Report. Maybe he was there. I don't remember who said it, but it was out of that combination of three guys. Yeah. Frazier and Hughes got into it on the sidelines. Loved it. And Frazier started yelling at Hughes, it's all about you, Jerry. It's always all about you. And that's kind of the exclamation point for what happens to players as you produce. There's a point where they can deal with you. Absolutely. But as soon as you slip in your production, you become expendable. And this roster had no problem making people expendable. They traded guys that cost them money to do so, um, and they they did it with without much thought. Um, you know, as far as the negative impact it would have, figuring that it was just going to better the team. I can't say that they were wrong. They made the playoffs. You can get pass rushers in the twenties. Yeah. So I think Hughes is replaceable in that respect. But does he need to go? No, he doesn't need no, to go. Does no. Charles this Clay just, need to go? Charles Clay doesn't need to go These are just either. options that the Bills could do because two things. Number one, the, the, the path that they, they, they probably want to take to not just make a, the playoffs for one year, to consistently make the playoffs and consistently compete and be successful. That's one. Two is the track record. Like you just said, they're not afraid to make these bold moves. If it's a part of the vision that they have, don't make these moves. So we've kind of been brainwashed in the fact that they think, oh, they can trade this guy. They can get they can cut Taylor. They can trade Glenn. They can trade Hughes. They can trade Clay. You know, they can do but they're just gonna get rid of all this talent. They're gonna do all this stuff. But the thing is, you have to look at the market. And like we talked we talked about Preston Brown being such a high valued commodity on the market because there's no linebackers. There's also no DNs, right? No left tackles. Starla Tulale is coming to Buffalo. Uh, thanks to Jimmy Preston today uh, for the sound bites. You can check him out at absolutesavage.com. Make sure you sign up for his newsletter. Boy, that man's got a lot of fun stuff. So thank you, Jimmy, uh, for uh, for letting us steal a whole bunch of your content. <laughs> uh, we very much appreciate that. We're not very funny, so thank you. Yes, we have to do that. See ya, dude! <laughs>